every other day talking about and, Dr. Do, do, do. check this out, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, relax. And I know you guys support because I didn't know any of y'all. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> I love y'all shit, y'all culture. Hold on, let me send it. So yeah, much appreciated. We fucks with it. You feel me? It's 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 pure love. You feel me? And it goes around. You feel me? Now before yeah, I leave, y'all gonna get uncomfortable because I'm gonna gas y'all up. Because seriously, like I don't um, I don't really like I don't have a click or nothing. I just really drop my shit and then let it be. So it's it's like uh, it, it's really you guys have played like a big big part. Real shit. <clears throat> oh man, you feel me? In a world where these niggas is clicking up, but cannot be legit. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> we buy ourselves but with support let's go oh man that's hilarious i hope everybody is feeling good salute to everybody sliding through the chat salute to everybody that's listening on apple spotify whatever you know what you said last week ben whatever your platform of choice is you feel me yeah, yeah man Special guest in the building. I'm going to let y'all know right now, before we get started, CJ is not here. My boy feeling a little under the weather. My man just had to leave to work you. early, try to sleep it off, and it just, it's, it's, it's not working. So, you feel me? We're going to holler at my man's next week. By the way, you feel me? If, if you ain't tapped in, you feel me? If you ain't tuned in, if you ain't staying dangerous, you need to tap in with the Public Enemies on Patreon. It's a new episode of The Extras out. You feel me? Uh, me. CJ, Ben, we just dropped that this morning. So if you, you know what I'm saying, missing your fix to CJ, pause, you feel me, if you're feeling that way, uh, check out it on Patreon, you feel me, new episode, do your thing. But we are in the building, you feel me, with Adrian Hernandez of Unlikely, you feel me, you got hella jobs, I feel like, you feel me, you do the radio, you know what I'm saying, you be all around, you feel me, like, I, I love seeing you move, you feel me, and it was a pleasure, you feel me, getting to, getting to tap in and meet you, you feel me, at WrestleMania weekend, you know what I'm saying, so I, I salute you, and I thank you for making time, you feel me, to hop on and kick it with us for a minute, you know what I'm talking about, but my yeah, boy's in the building, you know what I'm saying, thank you, bro, thank you, Such. after my mini little tour, I was in New York, I went to Forbidden Door, I went to the SmackDown in Madison Square Garden, uh, and then I yeah. flew to Toronto. Had to use the passport finally as a grown ass man at age thirty. Finally, use my passport. Go to Toronto. Land fifteen minutes after the "Not Like Us" video. We'll get into it later. But we went to Money in the Bank. Now we're back in Vegas, where it's one hundred and twenty degrees. But I'm glad to be here. I told you guys before we started the show, I'm moving. I'm getting myself a crib. Getting out of yeah. this apartment. This Ooh. is the final. Final thing I'm doing with this camera in this room, and it's a pleasure to join you guys Um, because I told you I'm going to gas you up the entire episode. A lot of my content doesn't get the eyeballs it does without the support that you guys have given it throughout these past two to three years, and I've been going heavy with the wrestling shit. So salute to all of y'all that make your guys' platform what it is today. Salute to y'all for real, and thank you for having me. I appreciate you, bro. Hey. I was love, bro. You feel me? I'm talking about, but hey, man, I'm gonna give it right back because, it, listen, it's 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 the quality of your content. You know what I'm saying? Like you're dumbass relatable, and we appreciate that about you. You feel me? So like it 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 gotta get out there. You know what I'm saying? One way or another, without us, it's gonna get out there anyway. You feel me? So salute to you for. Hey, let CVV know. Cool. Let CVV know. No, I'm playing. Let me yeah, stop. hey, 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 yeah, relax, yeah, yeah, relax, man. But I'm not. <laughs> I, I, relax, but no, I'm being serious. <laughs> but still, <laughs> hey, you, is 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 he on the list? Is he no, on no, the no, list no, 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 no. This this list? Not not that no, no, list. No, no. Not that list. I'm no, no, he, like, he's, you know he's, he's on like, the list of, he, he's he's the top tier, you feel me? He's yeah. he's numero uno, he, you know what I'm saying? He's that and, guy. And I love to compete. That's all I say. But it's all love. There's a lot of, uh, there's like a miss, um, I don't know what it is, bro, but like, we all competing, right? We all want eyeballs on their stuff. But me winning doesn't mean that you can't win. You winning doesn't mean that I can't win. Um, And, and credits to Chris. Uh, actually, in Toronto, like we we talk the most that we have at some of these events. Um, mm -hmm. And he used to do TV in Cleveland, which was weird because I grew up in Cleveland. And like I I saw him on the news, but I didn't know who he was. He was just a newscaster. And yeah. 10 years later, I'm like, oh, snap. Wait a minute. Um, So no, salute to him. But, you know, we aiming for number one, too. You remember when Mac, Mac Miller, rest in peace, J. Cole and Kanye dropped uh, the albums on the same day. What was it? Yeah. Yeezus. Uh, what was Born Center. Jay, Born Center and then watching Born movies Center. with the sounds off. Yeah. Um, like I thought that was dope because all three of them dudes was on different levels. Mac was indie, J. Mm -hmm. Cole was on the rise, and Kanye was Kanye. So I ain't afraid to drop the interview the same day as CVV, but that, that's what it is, baby. It's for the sports, for the love of the game. 
Go crazy. <laughs> straight up. Go. I love straight it, up. bro. Hey, man. And with that started, let's go ahead and hit the button and get the show started. I'm with it. Ladies and gentlemen, people with jobs, people without jobs, middle class, upper class, high class, all that. I'm talking about cat snakes, chickens, ducks, elderly people, and twerkers. We present to you another edition of the Public Enemies Podcast. What episode is this? 313? 313? Let me see. 313? 314? Say whatever it is, I believe it. Say whatever it is, I believe it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, numbers be lying. You know what I'm saying? They say men lie, women Uh lie, numbers don't, but numbers do be lying. You feel me? Y'all know it's bots out there. They be doing all crazy. You know what I'm saying? It was for... Don't even worry about it. We'll get to that later. You know what I'm talking about? I go by the name, oh my God, Graham. The Waco kid is in the building. You know what I'm talking about? What's up with my boy? How you doing, bro, bro? bro I'm great. I'm fantastic. You know, I'm just, you know, I'm praying for CJ. The real the real JM said, yeah, he got dysentery, bro. You like good. A pirate <laughs> disease, whatever you say. Like, uh, you know, last time he had, uh, what was it, scurvy? So, you know, pray for CJ. Pray he gets a better diet. We'll figure this out. <laughs> We'll figure this out, man. I, I had to give you a moment to get your shit off because last time when you weren't here, CJ kind of spent the mm. whole episode giving you just different ailments and all of that. So I figured it was, <laughs> it was an opportunity for, for you to get back at him all the time. But as we did, <laughs> at one time I got, at one time he said, like, I got smallpox. I was like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> smallpox. Yeah, he line. I'm not going to lie to you. He was on your bumper. It wasn't even fair. But, you know, what can you do? You weren't here. So. Man can't defend himself. I should have. Yeah, I, I, I probably could have defended you a little bit more. But hey, man, you a grown man. You you would have heard it. You know, you felt the way you felt. Right. <laughs> like we said, Adrian Hernandez is in the building, my boy. Like we, hey, we just mentioned, just got back from Toronto, did Forbidden Door weekend, everything. Like and, and getting ready to move on and, and get you a new spot. I just want to say congratulations once again because hey, moving on up to the east side. You know what I'm saying? To the big, hey man, what? Hey, hey, salute to my dog Banks. You feel me? What's up with my boy? You feel me? In the oh. building, I salute you. I appreciate you, brother. But Adrian, what's going on, man? Tell me about this Toronto trip. Tell me about like how how was this was like you said you you had to put your passport to use. So this is the first time you've been in Toronto. Yeah, first time I've been to Toronto. Um, so it started off luckily. Shout out to my sister, uh, who lives in the Bronx with my niece. Um, for the longest time, it's been real cool. My niece is now she's six years old. Yeah. Um, she one time she came to visit and I, and I showed her a match. It was Bianca Belair, and she seemed to be really interested in that. But that's all I showed her. I wasn't trying to push yeah. it on her like my son, where I'm forcing him to be a fan. Um, hey, look at this. Long story <laughs> short, uh, she she'll call me every time we Facetime. She got a Bianca Belair toy. She got this and that. Um, so for the longest time, I was like, yo, I need to take her to a show. I need to take her to a show. Um, and Madison Square Garden was coming up. Um, you know, where Paul Heyman got through the table uh, with Solo and the, the all that stuff. And I was like, yo, we're going to try to make this happen. Um, July 4th, I was off for the week um, with, with work at the radio station. I was like, I'm going to take a day off. We're going to pull up. Um, luckily, the flights worked out where I landed in the afternoon, was able to get to their house and was able to make it right in time, five minutes before the lights went off to go live on Fox um, to take okay. her. And I had never been, I had never been to Madison Square Garden either. So this, it's a bucket list. There's certain venues that I want to experience wrestling with because you see it on TV and it's so crazy. Um, so to be able to take her, I was like, yo, I'm good. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm great. And the SmackDown was fire too. Um, so to be able to do that and then go to Long Island for Forbidden Door, um, any, any chance I get to see Swerve in person, Will Ospreay, and then they're going up against each other. That was tight. And I was like, you know, let me learn about New Japan because I don't I don't watch everything. I got a lot of stuff going on. But I was like, let me experience that, especially the fan base, um, which was great. That match was incredible. Um, spent some time in New York. Uh, shout out. Shout out to my sister. Yo, she got a she got a backyard and a porch and like a, 
uh, what's what's it called with the fire? The will you make marshmallows? Why can I? I'm not. I'm tired. Bit. Yeah, a little fire. No, she got, but she got the fancy joint with like the uh, little clicker that goes instantly. I was like, you doing really good. She got I'm like so the smokeless one, like the, the yeah. And I know her rent's like five thousand dollars. It's New York, so I was like, yo, I'm so proud of you. Hey. Um, so that he was said, sis, he, he said, sis got a large house and a dog house in a backyard. Even the like, dog house got a backyard. You feel me? The, the basement, our basement. <laughs> Basement had multiple rooms, so um, yeah, we, we we spent the week there, and then we flew to Toronto. I wanted to see what the vibe was, and then to get to like the important part. So I landed on July fourth, very un-American to leave on July fourth and land in Canada. <laughs> landed at seven fifteen, and for some reason, I don't know, my sister had me inspired for the first time. I bought the stupid ass Wi Fi for ten bucks, even though the flight from New York to Toronto was ten dollars. But I saw that Kendrick dropped the video. The problem with this internet service was is that it wouldn't you couldn't play a video. So like everything was loading. Like if you're on Twitter, on social media, you're going on websites, read everything was loading fast. As soon as you mm -hmm. click the video, shit wasn't working. So I was like, yo, Kendrick just dropped. Thankfully, we landed 15 minutes later. I watch it and I'm like, this is nuts. I go to get my Uber, I go through security, all that stuff. Like that probably 15 minutes from the plane to my Uber. I heard that song off of people's phones. Seven people, two of them in crying. the six, two of them crying. You could tell they was bummed out. The other five were like, "This is nuts and happy as hell." So, like, just in that fifteen minutes, um, in clubs and venues, because uh, downtown Toronto is super lit. It has traffic, like people walking, people on the subway, the trains, cars, like everything's popping. The brunch spots, like everything is popping, right? That was played in clubs. I heard it walking down the street. It was being played. So it's Nav City. I checked in with him to make sure I was good. That's who That's I said it to. Because it's a Drake for bro. I said, tap, tap, tap. Am I good? He said, you cool. Because I was like, this ain't a city anymore, bro. This is wild. Oh, my God. That is crazy. I checked in with Nav instead. Down the Monko, Monko. Shout out to Nav. This is the first time and probably the last time that is ever going to be said on this program. You'll never say that. What's going on? <laughs> that is great, man. It's a, a, man, I don't, I don't know. Things are changing in the landscape of hip hop. I don't know what's going on. Hey, Drake will be completely fine. Uh, but I just feel like in some cases you just you just gotta take your L, man. And this is this is one of those times, man. And to the victor goes the spoils. You feel me? Ah, damn, it's unfortunate though. High oh. power, shout out to Kendrick, TD, top dog, black hippie. Oh, you already god. know. Oh god, big west side shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but all right, man. Let's 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 get into some 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 wrestling conversation and transition because I know, of course, the majority of you guys are, are here for that. But um, as we mentioned, you know, what I'm saying your Toronto trip, Money in the Bank was this weekend. The biggest news, in my opinion, to to come out of this week, regardless of it's as crazy of a week as it has been, has been the announcement of John Cena in his retirement this this idea of this retirement tour you got to speak to the man you know what I'm saying after Crazy. after the announcement that was wild you know what I'm saying got the little baby got to throw the little plug in there you know what I'm saying for the pod by the way John Cena if you're watching this I know you follow the pod you know what I'm saying make sure you tap in with my mans you know what I'm saying get on the pod do the interview yo it's respond like to the DMs bro because I messaged him I was like yo man what the fuck you doing bro <laughs> There's no 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 hit bag, no reply. I was like, all right, you save it all for the press conference. I get it. Okay. <laughs> but this whole idea of, of John Cena's retirement, um, he, he announced that 2025 is, is gonna be his last year as an in-ring performer. At first, I know we was all super surprised and super caught off guard because it's like, hold on, what you doing with this weird ass t-shirt on? And then why you why you saying that, you know what I'm saying, like you finna shut it down. I know he's been saying in the interviews for the last couple of years, hinting at, you know, the idea and the possibility of winding down by the age of 50. But I believe he's 47 right now. So I thought maybe we was going to do it. At, I thought maybe it was going to be they was going to try to do like a milestone thing of like WrestleMania 45. Maybe, you know, what I'm saying, hold on, John, do 51. You know, what I'm saying? maybe 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 you could do another year or something like that. But. Here we are, uh, 2025. He's going to wrestle the entire duration of the year. I believe he mentioned at the press conference it's going to be about 30 to 40 dates. Um, I'm going to start with you, Adrian. Like, 
of course, as you got to speak to the man, like what are, what are your thoughts on this 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 whole ordeal? Uh, John Cena kind of hanging up the boots or the jorts rather, um, and you know what, what do you what do you envision for his twenty twenty five year? Honestly, I kind of first off, um, I did see the picture that he took at the airport with a fan. Um, and I know that picture dropped like a couple hours before Money in the Bank. So, you know, getting into the venue and stuff like I saw it, but a lot of people didn't. So everyone was surprised, like, yo, what is he doing here? Um, I would when it comes to the decision to retire and to do it out, like to play it out through the end of next year. I kind of love it, man. Like, uh, I'm kind of sympathetic, bro. Yeah, as yesterday, I saw Team USA, LeBron and Steph play on the team for the first time and realized that, low, this is LeBron's last Olympic run and he about to be next after Cena. It's cool for Cena to get the, uh, what is it, the Derek Jeter, the Tim Duncan treatment. Like, I, I want I want gifts at every venue that he visits, you know, his last time in Chicago, his last time wherever, whatever cities, and give him something. And, like, it's cool to see to see him get his flowers like like the sting the way that the sting stuff was set up like that was beautiful to me um and not to jump ahead like but i it's i'm glad that he's committed i'm glad that he's trying to do this throughout the entire year i'm glad that he cleared it up at the press conference because what i got from it was that he was going to retire in Vegas. Like when he was in the ring, that's what I got. I was like, Oh, he's doing this to WrestleMania. So we're going to get that Royal rumble run that three month, you know, from January to April. And then that's yeah. it. Um, but I'm glad that he's like, no, we're going to play it out throughout the year. There's a lot of different stories that they could tell. I mean, he's, he brought it up. He hasn't won in a long time. So what if they set up for him to finally get that last title run? Um, and there's a lot of different things that they can play with, but ultimately like, how many wrestlers have the option to do something like this? We haven't seen this. Um, and if there's anyone to do it, it should be him. And the landscape, the way it is, whether it's talent uh, that's been there and, and, and that, that are veterans like a Cody Rhodes, um, that, that's a matchup that we want to see. Or all the new talent, Braun, Carmelo, you know, Ilya, whoever you want to do, there's enough time to tell a lot of different stories. So if you want to treat this like that U.S. title run where he was facing all these different names and putting on classics and doing these moves we didn't know that he had, like, I think it's a beautiful thing. And I'm, like, very excited for next year with the Netflix and, like, yo, TKO is not messing around. They're trying to swing for the fences in this first year and, like, put their stamp on this. And John Cena just adds on to that. Ben, what do you think? Yeah, when I, when when it was announced, it caught me off guard. And then, like like what you said, I thought it was going to be like a three month run. I was like, man, I was like, I, there were a lot of dream matches that we wanted to see you in. But then when he cleared it up that it's going to be a year long run, I was like, okay, so we can get like the matches like with Gunther and stuff like that. And also, I thought it would be a really fun idea for him to get the Intercontinental Championship because that's the last title that he, you know, has been eluding him like his entire career or something like that, or to go after that world title, something like that. I, I, I know he better, ha- he better have a belt somewhere in his, somewhere in his last run. I don't know why Where? I just thought about uh, Sheamus not uh, being an Intercontinental Champion yet either. And I don't know, maybe. Time. I think maybe Brock Lesnar was the other guy too, who like that was the last belt that none of them have had, those three. I'll let a black guy get it. He'll come for it. Oh, Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar ain't never been a tag team champion. He ain't never had no U.S. Yeah. title. True, he don't care about true. none of that. He don't care about none of that. Mid-card <laughs> <Brock Lesnar>. camaraderie <laughs> teams. <laughs> Yo, Graham, can we talk about his final opponent? Yeah, let's let's do that. I mean, what do we think? Who do we think that should be? A, a lot of people are saying it should be Randy Orton. Uh, some That's people have the opinion it should be. Yeah, some people have the opinion it should be, you know, an, an up and comer or somebody younger that, you know, he can give back. And uh, Adrian, what do you think? Look, we did the up and comer thing at WrestleMania 39 with Austin Theory. Yeah. It was actually it was heinous because those make a wish kids like that was that was criminal like that was some bullshit okay so we've seen that and again I'm gonna go back to the sting thing that changed my my perspective because everyone talks yeah. about you got to give back and push it because wrestling doesn't end and you got to give it forward like no you can like if he faces Randy Orton at WrestleMania and they get to close that out how they want and, and close the close the final chapter at storied rivalry of a damn generation however they want to do it they can do it if if he wins 17 there breaks the record at mania 
and then leaves it in the ring, we can do it. Mm-hmm. The only thing I don't want him to do is to come up with a new belt like The Rock when he came out with the People's Champion belt. Like, I don't want him to come out mm-hmm. with just a spinner yep. belt for no reason. That's <laughs> the only thing I don't want. So I kind of prefer to, like, let him stand on his on his greatness. Like, if he wants to win the title, if he wants to close it out with Randy, this isn't a situation that I think has to be like, yo, you have to face Braun and you have to lose mm-hmm. to Braun or Melo mm-hmm. or whoever to pass the torch, in my opinion. I'm with you on that. Um, he did mention that he's not into like politicking and like asking for opponents or anything like that. So it's like whatever they come up with, uh, he's kind of with it. And I think another interesting layer of this was uh, he mentioned that <clears throat> they had had conversations about him, you know, possibly, you know, hanging it up or whatever. And he said that it was WWE's idea to do it now. And like you said, A, TKO is really trying to put their stamp in the game and let y'all know within this first year that they have plans laid out for the future. They're telling you now, boom, 2025, you've got John Cena's retirement tour. So you have that to look forward to. 2026, you've got two night SummerSlam. All right, boom. After that, we've got this whole uh We've still got the Saudi thing. People, don't worry about that. It's still there. It's money. It's income. Your opinion don't matter. <laughs> it really don't. But then they also got this, you know, they got this partnership with Lucas Oil Stadium. You know what I'm saying? So they've got things that they're lining up to tell you, okay, boom, 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 boom. And whatever the roadmap is, like Triple H said, the GPS that they use with the creative to get there. Um, I don't know. I definitely want to see Cena in the ring with somebody like Ilya. I want to see him in the ring uh, with Braun Breaker. Um, I definitely want to see those matches. And I'm not of the opinion, really. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. It? My son just what? got home from school. Hey, what's happening, young boy? Yeah, hey, oh. Yo, shout what's out to happening? Sire. First time on camera. Uh, Sire, whoop, 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 whoop. Uh-uh. You're not going to say anything? <laughs> Hold on. It's no, I O-V- got you. Say O-V-O. Oh, we ho. Say, oh, we ho. Oh, I got you, sire. Let's do this. That <laughs> fuck <laughs> Papa, I got to finish this and then we're going to Sony. It's okay? fire. All right, I love you. Hey, man. We want to do a bloodline one and that's it's, it? It's, 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 it's Dola, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Let's do it. Bear, 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 bear. Do a bloodline if, one. If we, if, if we all got to do it, we got to do it and then let's Tear make it Papa. live. Love you. I'll see you a little bit, okay? So my son's here. No. My fault. We good. Nah, <laughs> we good. Bro. That was fire. <laughs> I love the cameos. You know what I'm saying? That was fire. Listen, we got we got two for one. You know what I'm saying? We got we got two guests for the price of one today. You know what I'm saying? So we yeah. we came up. This lo- you know what I'm saying? In my opinion, you know what I'm saying? It's good. It's love. I forgot where I was at. What was we? Talking Yo, about? I want to say one thing Matches. too about Cena real quick. <clears throat> Handle I just that. think we also need to remember because I'm I'm it's stuck in my head that yo he's done at Mania and he's not. He's done. Okay. Is he and just like, done? Whatever. The, what, what's the? I don't know the calendar next year. But like, is he done at the last SmackDown or Raw? Like, whatever's closest to the thirty first of December. That uh, so like, maybe that that show at Madison Square Garden after Christmas. Maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the yeah, the show that they always do. Like so, that kind of changes the trajectory of what they can do. So it kind of like it doesn't have to be as dramatic. It will be probably because it's they want to close out with a bang, but it kind of opens up the playbook a lot, which again is super dope. They're like, let's do yeah. this for a year. Mm. Mm. I'm I'm listen, they should do like a uh some on Netflix. They make it, you know, the stream stream the house show on Netflix. I think yeah. he's doing the network when they did like they went to Japan and they did the Beast in the yeah. East thing. They could. Why not? Pe- Peacock ain't gonna say or Netflix ain't gonna say no to that. Mm-mm. Mr. All Days Off says Logan Paul needs to retire Cena. That'd be ah, uh, that'd okay. be a lot of heat, but I think it would be the wrong kind of heat. I'm not gonna lie to you. All right, John Cena, man, hanging up the boots. How many years has this guy been wrestling? Hustle loyalty. Twenty two. Twenty two. Twenty two. In the WWE, years, at man. least. Yeah, he did like uh, he did uh, all pro wrestling out here in like San Jose for a little bit before he went over to OVW. Um, How old are you guys, by the way? I'm 36, P. 
I'm like uh, 10 years older than you, you feel me? Okay, yeah. so we're like all, okay, I'm 31, we're on the same range. I was just going to ask because like I don't, it's funny like how, how we feel about him because there's still people who really hate his ass from the, you know, oh, Cena yeah. Sucks era. <laughs> And to me, I, I was one of those kids because mm. I really got like what cemented my r- wrestling was like 2011, mm. uh, you know, and all that punk stuff. And even though I knew that I was paying WWE by buying the Cena suck shirt, I was like, yo, Fire. I need one. But like he really earned my respect with him coming back and like really going against all these dudes and putting on matches with styles and all that stuff. So it's like I was like, yo, I, I put him over the rock. I was like, yo, his longevity. Like, so it's just that, it's crazy. Yeah. I'm just I'm be, I'm being honest. Like the longevity and him coming back. Like I was like, yo, that's mm-hmm. dope. Yo, listen, fact, he was on top. Like, yeah. Go ahead. I was in just gonna fact, say, like, like he, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Are no, you good? I remember being polite. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So like it was, and uh, the other thing that I was that I liked about like Cena, like whenever he stepped away, he would always make sure like he kept his foot in the water some type of way, whether it was a match, whether it was an appearance. He wasn't like, yo, I'm just leaving for like three years and I'm coming back. He stayed true to that whole thing where like where you talked about the rock. It's like, oh, you leave them high and dry. You don't you don't come back and say nothing to him. Like he like like if I come to like even if I'm announcing the attendance, I came and yeah. I saw y'all like that kind of thing. And he smoked The Rock too, by the way. Like I hate to, yo. Know. The Rock is bro. the biggest reason why I have confidence as a fat dude. Cena still smoked his <laughs> ass, bro. And it's not just it wasn't just the damn the the permanent great. marker. Like I asked Cena at the press conference, yo, you gonna freestyle one time? Even that last freestyle in Cleveland where he's like, "If I'm Kung Pao Chicken, you Miami Chicken shit or some something like that." I was like, yo, I mean, he smoked him, bro. I'm sorry, yo. <laughs> That is the that like is like the rivalry that bridged the gap between me and my brother. Got him back into wrestling, and he came back. He's like, "Yo, this John Cena dude is ass." I was like, "Fuck you! <laughs> this man has been putting in the work. You weren't here for all that. You weren't here for the for the for the manga matches. You weren't here for the JBL shit." I was like, "Fuck all that." What was the Melter rating of those matches, though? Like four point three. No five-star match. Uh, I could have put him on the list. That's who I forgot. Anyway. <laughs> Listen, Cena, Cena's greatness, if you want to measure it by the, the guys that were at the top of the game, there's nobody that did what he did and that the company put the ball in his hand in their hands longer than him. He was on top, pause, longer than Hulk Hogan. You feel me? Longer than The Rock. Longer than Austin. This is, we're talking about like 15 years of just solid John Cena, never give up. Osama bin Laden has been compromised to a permanent end. These That's are the crazy thing you can put on the resume. That's crazy. It's just etched into my brain. It's just etched into my brain. I can't believe he did that. <laughs> I don't want to hijack the show. That's terrible words when you're talking about Osama. But I just want to say that like Cena, though, there's two things I didn't like. His his height his height has not reached what Cody's been able to do, like being the top guy and like getting that love from everyone, in my opinion. And two, there was that phase where he was kind of pulling the Drake and attaching himself to everything that was popping. Case in point, <laughs> Zack Ryder. Remember when Zack Ryder was really doing his thing? He attached himself to him. Um, and there was there was a couple moments where he was pulling the Drake, but. He redeemed himself, bro. Yo, bro, he had that match with uh with AJ Styles at the Alamo Dome. Them fools didn't leave the ring. <laughs> they were wrestling for 50 minutes and put on a classic. So he has the resume, but there was moments, and it's like Nexus. he he uh, Cody, like yeah. he, he hasn't reached what Cody could do. They wish they wish they could have, but Cody, like it's another level, in my opinion, at least. Yeah, man. Well. Cody's one of those matches, maybe one of those programs that we might be able to see. You know, my man is trying to politic for it and make it happen backstage. You know what I'm saying? Probably live and direct. He probably got a burner account right now trying to start a We Want Cody revolution for the John Cena-Cody match. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> Anyways, salute to John Cena. I'm excited for this run. Uh, They're going to make a lot of money, a lot of T-shirts. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of dope matches. So we'll we'll see um, what happens. I wonder how many matches he'll actually do as we close this one out because it's like 30, 40 dates. Cool, but how many matches are you gonna wrestle? Is he doing house shows? Yeah, I don't know. 
I Last know. time he came back, when he came back and he was like teaming with LA Knight and they did like the fast lane pay per view and stuff, that like two month run of SmackDowns, he was doing the dark matches. Like he wrestled Montez Ford. And she, the, I was like, that's dope. Cause like that's a matchup you never, that's a 2K matchup that you don't yeah, see in the sure. game. So he Nobody. did do the, he did do the dark matches like for the SmackDowns that he was at. So I mean, mm-hmm. I don't, I, he, I think he's that type of dude that he's going to try to get in the ring as much as possible. We'll see. We will see. Uh, real quick, couple things of note. Uh, just because the conversation was flowing, I just wanted to run through that. But small package news, real quick. Uh, what's your man's name? Minoru Suzuki suffered a concussion this past weekend at the uh, Tenru Project event on the 6th. That uh, looks like they're going to have to push back his match uh, with Chris Jericho for that for the world championship. You know, salute to the learning tree. Uh, so that'll happen sometime soon. But get well soon to Suzuki. On the WWE end of things, they announced that October 5th, they are bringing back the classic Bad Blood pay-per-view event. That's going to be live and direct from the State Farm Arena in Atlanta, Georgia. There was an ad with Cody Rhodes and Metro Boomin where they were doing like a stakeout outside of the arena. It appears that that's going to be a series uh, as they showed the to be continued at the at the end of the uh, the ad there, so bad blood coming back. Um, you ready for for a hell in a cell match, Adrian? Because I'm assuming hey, that's where we're going. I, I'm with it. I'm with it. Like it, it feels different when it's not forced in the name of the pay per view. Um, you know, I love I love to see people like do side quests in their life that are like really lit with Metro yeah. being a part of the Spider Man, and then like it was cool because. I think when like that dropped Metro posted the NWO title, right? He just posted the he picture did. of the belt. So it's like, Oh no, he fucks with wrestling. So yeah. for him to be able to do this, it's like, yo, this is cool because this is genuine. This isn't them just picking the name because it's Atlanta. So let's get Metro in future. Um, and even the little commercials, like hey, you're on the tour bus, you're on the tour bus. I'm on tour. You're on tour. And like you yeah. said, to be continued. Um, and for them to throw something, uh, in the calendar. It's like, all right, that's tight. And the only, we'll see, uh, they, they've been kind of doing only the big shows in the U S and then yeah. doing all these other pay-per-views um, overseas. So America, we got another one to go to because our options yeah. were slim. It was like Philly, Cleveland. Um, and that, yeah. that was it so far for the year. So it should be dope. And also like you talk about rivalries that, that hell, you talk about hell in the cell, like drew punk that could be in there. Um, they got multiple options. They got multiple things that can go Rhea and live. So like there's options that like genuinely deserve to have that stipulation and not force where we have to have it four times because it's the name of the pay-per-view. So I'm with it. Yeah. And I think this will be a situation where there won't be like a raw hell in a cell match and a SmackDown hell in a cell match or like a men's hell in a cell match and a women's I think they'll just focus on like one program and heat that up to the point where it's going to be, you know, it's going to boil over to where they're going to have to do something like this. And I like that idea rather than, like you said, just for the sake of it being, you know, the name of the pay-per-view or whatever. You feel me? Um, I want to switch gears uh, real quick here for a moment because I want to talk a little bit about AEW. Uh, Dynamite was last night. I thought that show was amazing. Um, the trajectory of Dynamite's ratings has been a little uh, underwhelming as of late. Uh, however, uh, I think with what they're doing with some of these summer programs, they're kind of starting to heat up a little bit. And I'm wondering, um, as we as we kind of go through the conversation of, of what AEW has been doing as of late, um, I'm wondering, and, and for the chat, I want you guys to chime in as well. Um, are, how do I say this? Is AEW, do you think these situations are happening organically to whereas uh, these matches are being booked and these storyline progressions are taking place? Uh, because that's a part of what the natural story is, or do you believe it's somewhat of hot shotting because of the underwhelming angle, uh, the underwhelming numbers, and of course the looming WBD deal that's supposed to be coming up here soon? I mean, it's tough to say. 
Only because when Tony and Mariah, uh, when they were like put together, it was like, oh, this is this is inevitable. This is being put together for the fallout. That being said, hey, bro, sometimes you know you're going to have McDonald's and sometimes that McDonald's hits. Like, it was fire. It was well done. This has been spaced out. She won the tournament. She went through all that. The matches were great. That ending was spectacular. Um, obviously, it's been weird to me, right? Because I thought Will and Swerve would do all in. And then I thought Swerve and, and, and Danielson would do Wrestle Dream because it's in their in their hoods for, 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 for Swerve and, and for uh, for Danielson. So we're getting both of those a little bit early. Um, and I, I mean, I just, I'm with it. Like I, I'm getting what I want. I don't have MJM. <laughs> MJF is like a face that like yeah. is cool, but you're not using your dude to the best of the abilities. I need this man talking shit and being angry. And that's what we're going to get. And now we have someone in Will that's like, the best wrestler in the world, in my opinion. And he's talking shit back. Like that line last week or, or uh, yesterday where he was like, yo, man, like he didn't give the money to somebody who just buries the company. Like that's real shit. I can see someone think having that perspective. So, and you have this talent pool and it's like, what are you going to, how how are you going to, I don't know, man. The AEW has, has had some struggles telling stories, but some of the stories that they're telling now have mm. are great in my opinion. And I'm glad that we're on this road and I'm glad like people can say what they want with swerve. And it's been a slow burn. Like it is what it is, bro. We're not going to get, we're not going to get like a, like a, a, just something incredible every week. Things need time to build. And that's what they've done with swerve in his title run. In my opinion, Um, some of the things that, that was odd to me was Samoa Joe getting put through, being put through the the wall or whatever and i understand that they did it because of the twisted metal season that they're taping but i was just like this could have been we could have had more stakes like if we're gonna have a match like this you just can't like just have it it was a cool moment or whatever but some of it's like i kind of wanted to be prepared for this but it is what it is but i think aew in general like next week's gonna be a fucking pay-per-view level s show I'm not complaining about that. People are like, why are you doing this on TV? I'm like, what the f- What? <laughs> what do you mean? It's, it's, it's like, listen, me as what? a fan, it's not my responsibility to worry about what they're going to do down the line. You know what I mean? Like, if if they want to hot shot programs, matches, angles without giving them proper build, then that's what they want to do. It's not my responsibility to be like, oh, but y- y- you should build to this and have this match at Wrestle Dream because, like you said, they both from the Pacific Northwest and, and it would just mean so much. And listen, I don't give a fuck. I want to see the match, whatever the fuck you want to book the match. I'm not tripping. You know what I'm saying? But I, I think some of the stories that they are telling right now are really compelling. And and the fact that it, it I said it last week on this show, this this Tony Storm and Mariah May thing was set in place literally from the day, from the moment that Mariah May stepped foot into the company. And for her to go through the 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 trouble or the to go through the i guess the i don't know the manipulative you know what i'm saying uh mindset of okay how do i get close to her to you know get close to the championship and be the one to take her down you know what i'm saying and she went so far as to become her protege and get the support of tony storm to say i want you to win this tournament and i want you to face me because as as my protege this is how it should be you feel me and for that whole thing to basically blow up in her face after tony you know what i'm saying be willow she wins this and like just the shot of Tony as bloodied as she was made Mariah May look like, I don't know, man, uh, for better choice of words. I don't know. A fucking psychopath. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was but, great. It was so quick, bro. It was she grabbed it and it's time for action, bro. There wasn't a second. There wasn't mm-hmm. a delay. That shit just happened. And they played it off perfectly. Like some people were disturbed. Like that's tight. And like, look at the women's division. That's not the only story going around. And there's not just exactly. one. Even Willow and Stan, I could argue, like, yo, there should be a bigger emphasis. Number one, because they're both incredible. And mm-hmm. you need Willow on the TV whenever, because she's a fucking star. And so is Statlander. Mm-hmm. But like, 
There's a lot of stuff going on. And for them to choose Tony and Mariah and Britt and Mercedes was before that. They they closed the final 30 minutes was was them that those two segments. And it's like, yo, and they deserve it. Like that's that's what's popping, and we want to see that. And that scene, like that stuff, that ending, it was perfect. It was like a movie. It's like the jo- becoming whatever Batman villain you you saw it in real time. It was crazy. Ben, your thoughts on this Tony Storm, Mariah May uh, thing, closing out Dynamite and, of course, leading into All In. Go. Uh, you, you remember how I said last week where I was like, yeah, this is this is getting like, it, like, come on, man, pick up the pace with it. I was like, yo, man, the Mercedes and yeah. Britt Baker storyline is looking like it's the better of the two. I, I just want to walk back my statement just a tad, you know, just a little bit. Because now I'm like, oh, shit, with the visuals and the way that they played it off. Because I'm thinking, like, you know, it's just going to be some regular, like, attack or whatever. We might see this, like, maybe at the contract signing for the match or anything like that. But it was like, nah, straight to the shit. Straight to the shit. And the fact that when she, they they did, they even continued it backstage after because they had, like, an extra video on AEW socials of, the mask and Mariah, like, yo, why would you, what was you doing that? What happened? She just stonewalls and walk right past him. And Tony walks back. Well, she kind of like falls back, crawls back there and just like passes out on the ground. I was like, this is top tier shit. Really is. I'm like, I didn't, I didn't expect it. Cause like this storyline has been going from what Thanksgiving to now. So I kind of got like some, yeah, so I kind of got like some lag on. I was like, "Come on, man!" But now I'm like, "Okay, now now we stepping in the high year. I'm I'm here for it." I think there was a little bit of lag on it because it took them a while to kind of figure out like the Tony Storm, like the in ring aspect of her character, and like find an opponent that kind of matched up to whereas the matches would kind of feel as good or as big as the angles and the build and the promos because it. it took a minute to kind of find that balance for her and listen this is all going to culminate uh at, at, at all in london uh wembley this year second time that they're going back there um along with uh swerve defending against brian danielson and not hangman page but some of us thought that maybe you know they were gonna bring that back around and uh you know <laughs> close out that angle maybe with a hangman page title win but maybe this closes out uh you know the pay-per-view the brian danielson uh championship win in route to his i don't know full-time uh retirement rather you know um i don't know uh there's so many things that they could do and so many twists that they've allowed themselves to to work themselves into with this uh, the some of the summer programs that they're and stories that they're trying to tell um I'm very interested to see how this plays out because Brian Danielson has stated multiple times that he doesn't necessarily want to be the AEW world champion. And in my opinion, so Too what? Bad. <laughs> <laughs> Damn bad, bro. Sorry. <laughs> it is what it is, man. Ben, you were you expecting this? Uh, Brian Danielson to beat Hangman and for this to be the match? Uh, I kind of was, I kind of really wasn't, I was expecting them to do like hangman page when they brought him out. I was like, okay, we're going to get the, the last match in this rivalry or whatever. Maybe hangman gets it. And I don't know what they're going to do with it. I didn't expect Brian Danielson to win. CJ did. CJ wanted me to let everybody know that he, you know, he has some ideas too. He'd be, he'd be saying shit. He'd be predicting shit too. So, salute, yeah, salute. so CJ saw this coming. <laughs> Yo, thanks. Big action. <laughs> he saw this coming a mile away, but uh, as for Brian Danielson winning the belt, I'm at the side with him. Like, I don't think he needs it. I think of him in a way like when Shawn Michaels came back in 2002 and he won that one world title and didn't touch it anymore after that. He was like, yo, I don't mm-hmm. I don't need the title. He, he doesn't need the title. But if you feel like if he doesn't win the title at Wembley, does this hurt his AEW career? Does this, no. Is this damaging in any way possible? Exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, hurt is is not the right word, but I think it's important not for him. I think it's important for okay. AEW that for them to have like a screenshot of one of the best wrestlers of a generation holding that world championship, and or one of their titles at with least, one of they've done, right? <laughs> but they've done they did it with Sting. They let him retire with the belt. So why not do it to you know what I'm saying? And then you could do what do they do really good with? They love to do tournaments and they're always bangers. 
So do it over again and give it back to Swerve and let them win the tournament again or whatever the case, however they want to tell another story. But, I mean, we're talking about one of the greatest wrestlers ever. So, like, there's an exception to letting him walk out with that. So, yeah, it's not that he needs it or it doesn't change anything or he becomes overrated if he doesn't. I just think yeah. it's important and, like, it's deserved, bro. This man is bloody John Moxley in it every week, bleeding and doing crazy shit and banger after banger. So, like, get that man a belt, bro. You need to give him a belt one time. He needs to join that class. At least, you know, there should have been like a trios title run or something like that for the BCC or like something. You know, he could have been our ROH he champion, had but what he up? hasn't had any championship his no entire AEW run. No and, TNT, and I'm, no FTW. I'm, I'm with you, Adrian. I, I do agree that it it would be important for the history of AEW moving forward to have a screenshot, to have some footage of him as the AEW world champion. Now, they can go and they can put screenshot and clips of him almost, and I'm holding the champion. I'm going to beat MJF, but you never got that accolade, you so you could never truly promote him as you know what I'm saying? The, the, like if the, AW, the yes you don't want the B roll, you don't want the B roll of 70,000 people doing the yes chant with him holding the AEW title. I'm just saying, bro, with, with the charade, with, with everything coming down and all that stuff, like you don't. It's crazy crazy to me. Playing in the background. Bro. Bro, so I don't us. want no belts. Just get my music. You think, you know, all the money that you was going to spend on the, on the confetti and everything like that, put it towards the final countdown budget. <laughs> I don't know why that smells so expensive. Um, yeah, and speaking of, uh, yeah, because that what was it? The uh, uh, Matt said that it's like two hundred fifty thousand. You know, every Say time that, that they play that song or whatever. That's hilarious. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, and going into that whole thing, like with the elite, um, we did uh, get the uh, the news that Hangman decided, okay, cool, I'll join the team. He's going to be on Team AW. Swerve has joined Team AW. Um, excuse me. Uh, Hangman's going to be on the Elites team in Blood and Guts. Swerve has joined Team AW with Mark Briscoe. Uh, I'm wondering who do you guys think who else could be on this Team AW? Because it seems like the Elite has their five. Has Darby officially joined? Uh, teammate Darby Darby's hasn't he hasn't officially joined, but basically with his return, like, like that's that's what I'm assuming he's gonna be on team AW as well. You know, you asked earlier, yeah. um, you asked about like the storylines and hot shot mm-hmm. in and forcing like this is one of those situations. Um because mm-hmm. like even even Swerve becoming team AW, what, like what, not to look at it from a hangman, he just had surgery, so now he's gonna be out for a year. He just had surgery last week. Um, for his ACL or MC, whatever happened with his leg in that match with Gabe Kidd. Um, yeah. Yeah, bro. Like, I get it, bro. They're assholes, but like, I'm not, I don't like it. Like, Swerve's on, I, I view Swerve as like, yo, he, he, an assassin. He's been on this run, a bounty hunter yeah. by himself, like doing this thing. And now he's becoming like the, the main dude to team AEW. Like, I don't, I, I don't buy <laughs> Company it. Company man. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I don't, I don't see it. Um, and I know Tony's not getting in the ring. So, I don't know, man. I'm sorry. I don't have two other people. I don't have them right now. I don't. I'm want trying to the figure acclaimed. out what. I don't want the acclaimed to do that. I don't. And I don't. that might be oh. it. It might be the acclaimed. And and I I'm trying to figure out like what yeah. is the end I better goal. Better put that shit What's on the... on on uh, uh what where does the uh, Impractical Jokers air? Put that shit on True TV. Oh, That's not TNT. I, I was gonna say. I, damn, I thought it was like Discovery ID or something. Hold <laughs> <laughs> on, one of them. I ain't trying to see that. I think bro. you're right. It's just, like, something like that. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know. Like, what? What's their ultimate goal here? To take over AEW and to usurp Tony Khan's power, or like, because Tony Khan has implemented Christopher Daniels as his on-screen voice, even though Tony Khan is also backstage at the shows. Still, that I, I don't. I don't understand why he needs that if he's if he's there as well. And then last week on Collision, they made the decision to make Jeff Jarrett the special guest enforcer together. Like, what do you why are, why do you need him then? Like, what is the point of introducing this on screen character for Christopher Daniels if you're gonna three weeks later take his power back and be like, not take his power back, but like now you're back on the show also making decisions like i'm confused anyways ben do you think they're hot shotting uh mjf and will osprey and swerve and uh okada for next week on dynamite 250 
Yeah, well, for Okada and Swerve, I'm like, okay, you can kind of like, if you know anything about like matches that Okada has, like he can, you can have like uh, one match with him like on TV or at like a throwaway pay per view or whatever, and then he'll like turn it up so he keeps the matches interesting as you go along. So I'm not worried about that one. Okada is always good for a great match. What I'm worried about is the MJF and Swerve. I'm not MJF and Swerve. MJF and Osprey one. I feel like that one's too soon. I feel like you got to have a bullshit finish, some type of match ending, because I feel like this deserves to be at the Wembley show. This is all in. This is an all-in match. Probably Garcia interference. Probably. Maybe. It'd be interesting. It's interesting because there's, like, this story of, okay, maybe we could see MJF and Osprey at all-in, but with Daniel Garcia being also a part of this, and then Pac also won that four-way, and he said that he wants the international title at Wembley. So if we have a situation where we could end up with Osprey versus Pac and MJF versus Daniel Garcia, and I think that's cool, but I feel like MJF and Osprey is the match for All In. And that's the money feud. I'm confused if they don't do that why they would do that. But then they also have all out two weeks later. Yeah, I about so to, yeah. Maybe that's why. <sighs> that's <so fucking> stressing <laughs> me out, bro. Again with it's this crazy. Dog. It's crazy. What are we doing, bro? Hundred dollars? What the hell's wrong with y'all? Anyway. Sorry. Got it's my crazy. wallet stressed three weeks in <laughs> two yeah. months in advance. This is, this is abs- <laughs> it's absurd, bro. It's absurd. Anyway. It's crazy. It's wild, man. I don't know, bro, but it, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Regardless, regardless. One person that we're not going to see at Dynamite 250 or at uh, All In uh, London is Stephanie Vicure. She exited CMLL this week, dropped, a, oh. uh, dropped all of her titles, uh, no longer with New Japan either. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I'll read this statement, and I guess we can open up the conversation here because what I'm the ready. Hell? All right, so CMLL dropped this statement. It says, special announcement from CMLL and New Japan Pro Wrestling. Thank you for supporting CMLL and NJPW. Citing personal reasons, Stephanie Vacure has elected to depart from the CMLL and NJPW rosters effective immediately. As a result, Vacure will not compete in her scheduled match uh, against uh, is it, uh, Yuvia. Uh, at Fantastic of Mania, uh, July 13th in San Jose. Furthermore, uh, CMLL hereby announces Vakura is stripped of both the CMLL World Women's and World Women's Tag Team Championships. Both CMLL and NJPW would like to apologize to our fans worldwide for the abrupt announcement. And uh, <clears throat> it seems as if she is uh, headed to WWE because, I mean, yep. as this was developing, why would she drop all these titles if she was going to AEW? Um, I'm not completely familiar. I've seen two matches, both of them uh, with Mercedes and uh, highlight tape. The highlight yeah. tape was dope, but was I, I, I'm fan. not... You feel me? I'm not going to act like I'm a fan and I'm super in the know about this woman. You feel me? But uh, just the, the the firestorm and the way this news has come in hot about her arrival to the WWE, yeah. I, I just wanted to get you guys' opinions on it. Um, Adrian, are you familiar, more familiar with her than I am, maybe at least? Or like, what's I, your not- opinion on this? this what's going on here? I feel a certain type of way that you'd ask the Hispanic person first and you could have went to bed and be like, are you from there? But that's cool, bro. I'm going I'm to put you on the it's spot. going back like, and forth on You watch, still a movie. You watch CMLL, right, bro? No, that's cool. It's all good. I got you, my G. It's all right, it's all right though. <laughs> um, no, nah, I'm not. I mean, she she put on a banger at Forbidden Door. I've seen her in person for whatever that means. No, I mean, she, I mean, no, I, I don't know too much, but I do know that I've had a job before. And I do know that I put in the two weeks before and then they said, hey, just don't come in. You good. You know what I'm saying? Like, look, things are ugly. These are two businesses. All these wrestling companies are going after each other, trying to be the best. And sometimes people want to do it for 
you know, it works out for their family. I don't have to move. I can keep what I'm comfortable with. Sometimes people want to go after that bag. And if WWE provided that bag and provided that platform that, that she wanted, like that's the beauty that all these companies exist. You can have someone as talented as Will Ospreay say, I'm good. I'm going to go to AEW and do something. And Stephanie can be like, I'm good. I'm going to go to WWE. So, yeah, man, it's ugly. It's unfortunate. Like all those fans that bought tickets to all these shows where she was scheduled for, it puts New Japan and, and, and all these other companies in a shitty situation on what they're going to do. But they have more talent. Um, salute. <laughs> they have more talent. Um, and wrestling's in a good place. And they'll bounce back. And it's just kind of... It's kind of the way it is, bro. It's like you're in the major leagues and you play on like the Oakland Athletics. Like, enjoy them while you have this star player for three years until the Yankees come and get that man a fifty million dollar contract that's more than the whole payroll of the team. Like, it is what it is. Um, but it is not to not to like it is like ah oh, that sucks for the fans that like wanted to see her and it puts these other companies in a bad situation. But I'm never going to take the side of the company over the worker getting a bag. Salute to you and get your money. Bro, you, you Don't really the took monk the words monk right. Monk. You really took the words right out of my mouth because I was thinking the same thing. Because You see a lot of people online who they act like they have stake in the company. They're like, I can't believe she did us like this. I'm like, us? Like, <laughs> let's let's backtrack that a little bit. And they, a lot of people fail to realize at the end of the day, like you put it perfectly. I've been saying this for a long time. At the end of the day, it's a job. Like people need to realize this. Yes, there's a, a, a family element to it in some places. Yeah, you know, you're living out your dream. You're traveling the world, but you're clocking in. You're getting paid, you clock out, you go home to your family. That's what it is. Like if and if you were fired, your ass will be replaced tomorrow, bro. Like, don't get this shit twisted. If I ain't at media day for the next whatever, some other motherfucker gonna be there asking the question, bro. Don't get too comfortable ever, ever. Exactly, period. bro. <laughs> like and, straight up. And, and on top of that, like people like don't realize she had a tryout back in like 2018. She didn't get signed to the company. She's been working towards this for a long time. And when they came along, they're like, hey, you want to come over and, you know, sign with us? She was willing to do it because this is what her dream was. It's like people need to put this in like a real sense of the way things operate in the world. Like you working at like Popeye's or some shit. You you close you opening up you closing you going to different locations filling in for people picking up shifts all that and Chick Fil A calls you they say hey we're gonna pay you more we're gonna give you more benefits we're gonna do we you know we're gonna do all this shit for you if this was a real person you wouldn't be like hey man you you gotta stay loyal to the company I don't I bet not ever see you ordering a chicken sandwich over here again I, I bet not see it because you wouldn't say that because that shit is weird <laughs> like. Yeah. Like, Popeyes no, in Canada was ass. Um, I got a chicken sandwich, <laughs> and it was super dry. I was disappointed. The pizza was also ass. Steaks were good though. Steaks were good. Anyway, did sorry. you did you try the 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 poutine? The, nah, the I saw it. No, no, nah, nah, yeah, no, nah, I saw it. I saw it, and I was like, nope. Nah, no, I'm not interested. Cool, but bro, it's not the wave. It's just you know one of those culture things. I figure you know they might want. No, they they had it everywhere, and I specific. Yeah. I didn't go to the was it Tim Hortons like their little donut shop or yeah. whatever. I was you like, went nah, to New Ho nah, King though, right? And then, bro, motherfucker, where's the menu? <laughs> Hold up, <laughs> damn, I'm not because I'm packing. No, did you I'm did packing. you 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 was in New Ho King with the duck sauce and the blammy crody? Bro, first uh, off, I was I, like, yo, what? Was, yo, that fried chicken was fire. I did the uh, the pork, the little riblets, whatever they call them, but I did yeah. sweet and sour. I usually go barbecue. I did sweet and sour. Shit was delicious. I did the white rice. I didn't do the fried rice. Um, yeah. I did have a waiter who was like it was her first day, and there was just some awkwardness, um, but the food was amazing. Um, it was funny to see everyone like stop to take a picture of the front window <laughs> and everything. Uh, I almost died there because the bathroom's in the basement. But when you walk in, you like think you're going into a bathroom and it's just like 30 steps. I'm like, what the fuck oh, is shit. this? But no, nah, no, nah, it, it was it was tight. I guess the prices were raised, but still them wings were like, I will. If I'm ever in Toronto, I'm always going to go there. And not just because of like it became a new a new landmark for the city. Yeah. I'm gonna find the menu while y'all talk. Hold on, it's it somewhere. was just fire. Huh? <laughs> yeah, oh. but like back to the Stephanie thing. 
Um, yeah, it's it's really up to people's personal preference. And like Ben said, she did have a tryout in 2018. Of course, they elected not to sign her at that time. But <clears throat> that doesn't mean that, you know, if that was her goal, that she just gives up on that goal because she's had these other opportunities in between. I did uh, read something on uh, Reddit uh, that alluded to uh, domestic violence situation with her and her ex-boyfriend um, who is currently incarcerated and might be released from jail, I guess, if, if you know, she's going to be out of the country. So, you know, maybe she'll be safer or whatever. But uh, he's also, I guess, really close friends with Roosh. Um, and so maybe there's a situation where it's like, hey, I don't want to be over there and be 100%. in that situation. I don't want to speak too exactly. much on that because I, I didn't read into and like find any like official articles on this. Uh, but like, there's just a multitude of reasons why people can make the decisions that they make. And just exactly. because you have this undying brand loyalty to this company for some reason that doesn't send you a paycheck, um, doesn't mean that for some reason people should, you know, stop accepting paychecks of their own. So, salute to Stephanie. Uh, she's going to be heading to NXT. They are building uh, I don't know, just the Avengers of women's wrestling down there. Yeah, <laughs> and Julia. Be fire. You know, mm-hmm. but, uh, oh, shit. He got it. <laughs> Menu. Fire. I never lie on this microphone. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> oh, they got to send. They got to send a thank you to Kendrick. Hey, hey real quick though, what was what was the rating on the on the food there? What was like the Melter rating? You give it like, uh, n- n- uh, nine and a half out of ten. Yo, Straight shit, up, that's fire. There Absolutely. you go. I'm so Puerto loose. Rican. So I like to put ketchup on the white rice, and they didn't mm-hmm. have ketchup, so I was like, okay, whatever. You don't know, be fancy. <laughs> right, but I put the sweet and sour from the ribs on there. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. So we still made it through. But that those chicken wings, bro. Oh my! I was like, I get you, Kendrick. I see. See, he don't lie either. I like, salute this man, bro. Great taste, bro. This shit is fire. I can see why Drake oh, got robbed God. here. Anyway. <laughs> All right, man. I, I don't. I don't, uh, don't want to. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, Ben. Uh, my last thing I had to say for this is like, you would think at this point that a lesson would have been learned a long time ago between these three companies because AEW was upset about it, CMLL was reportedly upset about it, and New Japan was upset about it because they were like, "Hey, bro, you, you you know you know you got a shift on Friday, right? What you mean you leaving?" They were like, "You know you got like you know you gotta you know you gotta put the fries down, right? You're like, bro, what are you doing?" <laughs> but you think that this was a lesson that they've learned because I remember back like damn near 10 years ago when they lost Shinsuke, the good brothers, AJ styles, because they weren't signing people to long-term deals. They weren't like coming back around to get the contracts for new Japan at least. And they weren't picking them up and they were just like, okay, well, you know, I'm cool with him. I'm cool with Shinsuke. Shinsuke live over here. I'm cool with the good brothers. I'm cool with AJ. You know, we did for them, you know, that no one can, no one can speak against it. They obviously they're going to want to resign because the way we treated them. And then all of those guys left, you got to go back through and you got to sign people to these contracts. You got to make it worth their while. You got to do their, your due diligence. You can't just assume like, man, we working on a handshake deal. Everything's going to be cool because like, no, like if, like what she did, like, yo, if a better opportunity, something that I always wanted to do comes along, I, I hate to do this, but I got to love y'all and leave y'all. Like, it, it's that simple. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. It's the, the the idea of, like, you know, the, she's burning all these bridges with these different companies or whatever. And, you know, like, yeah, that might be true, but... This is also the wrestling business where I don't think any relationship is completely fractured because I don't know. Money is always paramount. Um, So I don't really care if she's burning bridges or if she decides not to go work for that company anymore, because me as a fan, like I said earlier, it's not my responsibility. Um, Adrian, I want to ask you about this list here that you got on your screen before we go any further. Of course. Yeah. Because I I don't I don't know what's what's this about some of these some of these names I'm familiar with here. And, I'm so uh, glad some of them I'm not. You know, thank you so, for the time. Um, would, uh, everyone on please? this list, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> everyone on this list, fuck them, straight up. <laughs> fuck, fuck you, me, like fuck you, me. Look, the first five 
uh, Drain, Bangham, or whatever, bro. You gonna download my whole interview, and you gonna you gonna do tricks with it? You gonna cut five different clips? You gonna cut five different clips? You're not gonna tag me? Wrestling World CC, you just did it yesterday. With Cena's not gonna rap again. Who do you think you got that question from? I asked that shit. The Covalent TV, they want to take the Rhea Ripley clip. Fuck them. And they wanted to block me? Nah, oh. son. Nah, son. Y'all stay in y'all basements, bro. Get some Papa Tui. Touch some grass outside. Out of here. Fade away media. I ain't even got to say shit. Just pull up his freaking avatar on Twitter. Fuck that guy. And then Kenny Thoughts, here's the thing. First off, that man... I was on the run. I need to calm down and just... Kendrick said something to Drake. And I thought it was very potent, and I thought it was very honest. Sometimes it ain't that deep, bro. I just I don't gotta like you, bro. I saw this man take someone's picture. DTF Mania, shout out to her, shout out to Danielle. He took her shout picture, out. and then like Jay Uso was wearing a blue shirt before the Yeet shirts came out. So he went on Microsoft Paint and wrote Yeet, and then copyrighted it. Like this motherfucker's Picasso and did some shit, bro. What and he had like a GoFundMe for a TV? What are we doing here, bro? Nah, game's fucked up, bro. So if there's any confusion, I hope I made myself clear. Anybody on this list, and that's just off the top of the dome. There's yeah. more people that could be put on that list. If you yeah. take my shit, it's the reason why now you see the unlikely logo 15 different times. I didn't want it to be that way. Yeah. I didn't want it, but to. it's necessary, but man. it's crazy out here, and you have to be prepared. So that's Bro. just what happened. And also, oh, I should have put for you guys, fuck Complex. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> fuck them. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to say it. None of y'all got to say it. I'll say it for you. <laughs> fuck Complex. Y'all taking shit? <laughs> we hardworking, independent creators. You see my son that just walked in? I do this for him to make sure he got every Marvel toy possible. So stop playing with me, bro. You're going to credit my shit or I'm going to very easily hit the copyright. Stop playing with me, bro. That's, <sighs> that's it. Man, I'm trying to get my son a silver surfer, bro. What the fuck? What you the fuck are you talking about? Not, not a McFarland joint. Blocking. That's like five hundred dollars for no reason. Fuck that out of here, bro. Yeah, man. And you know what? Some of y'all got blue checks. You feel me? So I know y'all making a couple little dollars. Look. I don't give a fuck if it's seventeen fifty. You need to send some of that my man's way. You feel me? Because if you're using the content, you feel me, and not properly crediting, not showing love, right. not supporting, and that's to everybody, not just me, not just me. That's, that's to everybody. Killing. Yeah, that's yeah. To so everybody, everybody on that list. Everybody on that list. Hold on, where the clip at? You so full of shit. You so full of shit. Uh. Bro, <laughs> like you, you talking real shit? Because like when when I when I see creators stuff like that, like I, I I told you this. I said it takes two seconds to like at somebody do the research. Like where does this video come from? Who it's did this? It takes exactly pe- nine times out of ten people's names are in the corner. Just that you could easily be like, oh hey, like you you know you could put my name on there. And I and I literally will go back. People people can tell you like they'll message me and be like, hey, you didn't. You know, I, that was my video, like, and I, I put a credit under there. I don't give a fuck. I want people yeah. to know that's where it this takes came two from. seconds, bro. So, there you go. And, and we all in this game, so we know how important <laughs> all this shit is, right? And another thing, too, when it comes to interviewers, stop asking questions that you don't know shit about, bro. Like, <laughs> like uh, for example, Shayna Baszler loves Warhammer. I don't know shit about that game. I love video <laughs> games. I ain't never played that shit. So I ain't going <laughs> to ask it so that I could get a Warhammer retweet. Case in point, why are you asking about if Megan Thee Stallion or Cardi B is going to wrestle if you ain't never heard none of their fucking songs? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Very like, keep it question. in your lane. Stay in your lane. You can never say I asked a question and fake the funk. So, and that should be everyone's prerogative. Whatever mm-hmm. lane it is, because there's a million ways to get it. Choose one. Just don't be stealing people's shit. Did you ask uh, Brown Breaker if if uh, he wanted to? First of all, hold on, fuck that. Did you ask Brown Breaker what it felt like to spear Sami Zayn out of his fucking shoes? No, I didn't because I saw him with the belt and I was like, "Hey, bro, you you looking kind of?" He was wearing the Universal belt. He yeah, was like, he "Yo, was. you looking you looking kind of cozy with that belt." And he's like, "Yeah, man." <laughs> and we were in Legion Stadium, which is uh, 
I'm about to get to my plugs on what I'm working on because it's been a lot and I need yes. to get this out yes. there. But I got to talk before. to Braun Baker. I got to talk to Biggie um, yesterday. Mm-hmm. The Big 12 did their media day. Um, Deion Sanders and all those schools were out there. Um, and of course, the WWE and the Big 12 have a really good relationship. So Biggie and Braun Baker were out there and they had the universal title. Braun was the one mainly wearing it and he wore it during our interview. Um, Good dude. He only made eye contact with me twice because he was looking at the camera. And I get it. He's camera ready. But that always just freaks me out because, like, we're in person. But it is what it is. It was a good conversation. (laughs) And then shout out to Big E, too, um, because we were supposed to talk for only five or six minutes. We ended Mm -hmm. up talking for almost 16, 17 minutes. Wow. Um, And, he, you know, he used to FCW. It's funny because today's the 11-year anniversary of the Performance Center. Before then... FCW used to be at a place that now is a bounce house for kids. And before it was FCW was where all grocery stores would go to pick up like the ravioli and bean cans, like a storage unit place. Like that's real shit. Um, And it used to be next to a Sam's club. And I was, I worked and I went to school. And so it was cool. This motherfucker always used to work into the lids. I worked at and the foot locker never bought anything, but he always used to walk in and he did it a Saturday before he debuted and beat up Cena. And I thought that was always so ill. So to get to talk to him um, was a really great conversation. Um, On that note, um, I just talked to The Miz, which I'm born and raised in Cleveland. So to get to have that conversation, that comes out tomorrow, Friday, on the YouTube. Uh, On Saturday, I talked to Gabe Kidd in Toronto at the GCW show. Uh, Monday, the Big E interview's dropping. Tuesday, the Prom Breaker interview's uh, dropping. In Toronto, along with Gabe Kidd, I talked to L.A. Knight, Carmelo, uh, and Tiffany Stratton. Um, I talked to Shawn Michaels, Will Ospreay, Swerve Strickland, Trick Williams, Roxanne Perez. We've been working these past two and a half months. So please, YouTube, youtube.com slash Adrian, CLE93. Or like John Cena said, unlikely with Adrian Hernandez, if you check out the podcast as well. And I'll say this again. um, You guys... The one that will always stick out is last year, earlier this year at the Royal Rumble at the 2K event, I interviewed Rhea Ripley. Um, She made me fold in three and a half seconds because I'm really smart with my content and I did that shit on purpose. We was in the club. I wouldn't even give her time. I don't like white women. I'm just kidding. That's Cap. That's Cap. (laughs) It's all Cap. I would have folded. She's gorgeous. But you guys retweeted that and that like that shit went viral. And one of the main reasons is you guys showing love to it. And I don't have a click. I don't have a gang. I came into this by myself with just a love of wrestling um, and the support of you guys and, and others in the community. Like, I really fuck with y'all and what you guys represent. And for you guys to to always reach out, always retweet um, and talk about some of the stuff that I do. Like, that shit means the world to me. Because like I said earlier, we're all independent creators and I don't get to these places and get to talk to the people that I've been blessed to talk to like Sean fucking Michaels without the support of you guys bringing eyeballs to what I do. Um, so salute to y'all and much love. Thank you. Brother. Thank you once again for taking some time to join us here today, brother. Thank you for cons- like just completely just giving yourself to this space and the, the content that you create. We appreciate it. I know the, the people here, of course, watching and listening live, you feel me? Like they're appreciating you here. And, and and if you don't know about what Adrian's doing, he just gave you all of the game, all of the ism. The links are going to be down low in the description for the show and appreciate all of that. Of Thank course. you. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, of course. And, and there's a couple of comments here. <laughs> I just want to read. <laughs> this is uh, Adrian completely broke Ben. Uh, <laughs> uh, this crowd lays <laughs> off. Jizzle might get replaced like dark skin on Viv. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yo, okay. Wait a minute. Uh, Anthony Davis says uh, Adrian just made a new fan in me just off this interview, and that's fire, man. And this isn't even an interview. This is just us kicking it, man. So you feeling like, or you saying, you feel me? You didn't really come in this without a click, without a posse, without yeah, yeah, yeah. Consider yourself family. You feel me? Because just the, the love that has been reciprocated from us, you feel me? Between us, rather, you know, what I'm saying over this last year or so has been just beautiful, and just seeing your growth has been amazing to see you feel me and and i'm just excited and i'm happy for you you feel me and i hope that you continue that success brother no salute thank you guys so much with that being said i appreciate you guys i gotta go take my kid to swim practice i'm out of here y'all be easy be safe ben it's a pleasure to finally get to talk uh everyone that listens keep supporting these motherfuckers bro we uh represent 
people that don't usually get platforms and stuff. And you guys have built something Make amazing. That. So keep pushing that shit to the moon. We appreciate hey, you, bro. brother. Hey, man. Right back at it, man. Oh, you feel man. me? Salute to Adrian. You feel me? That was a really good time. Um, I didn't really appreciate him throwing that little stereotype on me about him being Hispanic. You feel me? And me asking. Hey. I was just, I'm just playing. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, hey, I was asking. because you, you were like, I already know this nigga over here. He ain't seen but two matches. I've seen one Stephanie back here match. I, I already know. He ain't hey, seen my half of it. I'm like, I know Ben. You feel me? That's my run name. You feel me? So I'm asking you. You feel, And on top of that, I'm trying to go back. Anyways, that was hilarious. Adrian was hilarious. He was great and amazing. Hey, 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 you feel me? What y'all think? What was the what's, what's the rating? You feel me? What y'all think about that? You feel me? I should have asked I him. I should have asked him. Never mind. Never mind. Never we'll mind. save for next time. I'm definitely going to have bro back on. But yeah. Yeah, man. Shit. That was fun. <clears throat> All right, let's get it back on track. Ben, what do you want to talk about, brother? Shit, what else we got? What else happened? Uh, yeah. Shit. We got this real Ripley about bad return. Blood? Oh, you talk we talking about Ripley's bad blood? Yeah, we yeah, talked yeah, about yeah. bad blood already. We ran through that oh, yeah, real yeah. quick. You feel me? That of course. Uh, yeah, but Rhea Ripley. Uh, Rhea Ripley returned this past week on Monday Night Raw. Damn. <clears throat> what is this? What, what, what happens now in the world of Dominic Mysterio? Because... It, it, listen, it, it took some time, but this man was folding, bro, bro. And it seemed like it was right there. You feel me? Right bro, there. And the uh, wild part is, it's just like, yo, man, that's all he needed to tip him over the edge was the win over his daddy. He was turning a freak, man. It was like, yo, that's <laughs> weirdo shit, bro. <laughs> I was like, yo, I beat my dad. All right, bro. What we doing? <laughs> all right. All right. What we doing? <laughs> What are we doing? You feel me? That's that's crazy, bro. And uh, I, I don't know where this story goes, but I don't know. Uh, Rhea Ripley is back. Dominic, he seemed like he was really happy. He was really excited. And like, this hey. look on his face right here, I don't, I don't really know if he did anything to deserve to have to look like, you feel me, the puppy dog man right now. He should have poked him in the middle of his forehead. That would have been hilarious. Like I thought y'all like mm. <laughs> but yeah, she she it would have been hilarious if she flicked him in the forehead or pushed him in the forehead, like you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, just give him a quick little you know what I'm talking about. But man, what 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 happens here without uh with with the judgment day, uh with with Rhea and Liv, I'm assuming maybe they'll go into a match with, with those two at SummerSlam for the title if Rhea's Back healthy. Um, I know Fightful have reported that WWE was attempting to uh, kind of lay this story out in a way that Rhea could return to television pretty much at any point, regardless of if she was uh, 100% ready to go or not. Uh, so I don't know, kind of in a will they or won't they uh, phase, but <clears throat> I don't yeah, know. Bro. It's definitely what look like it definitely looking like the Judgment Day is on its last leg. I think SummerSlam would be the place to set up kind of like the implosion of the group because you can see it on there it's two sides that the group is kind of like shifting because you see it the the tension between Damian and Finn and then obviously between uh Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley and Dominic Mysterio. I think this is a setup for Dominic to kind of turn on Rhea Ripley. Like he like tries like, oh I'm making it up to you. I'm gonna make it up to you. Like I'm gonna make sure you win the match at SummerSlam or whenever they wrestle. Last minute stabs her in the back, joins up with Liv Morgan, and that's like the next leg of his career or whatever. But I do think like Damian Priest versus Finn Balor is definitely on the line because it's like, yo, we had the the callback to last year's Money in the Bank, which is what I kind of thought they were gonna do for a minute because I was like, okay, last year. Damien was the one who fucked it up for Finn when he was defending against Seth Rollins. And now this year, he's a champion going in. I see maybe that's what they or do. Challenging. Um, yeah, challenging. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's challenging. Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking maybe that's what they do leading into SummerSlam uh, again in his match with Gunther. Something like that. It's not like Gunther needs the interference to beat him or anything like that. I mean, Gunther been slapping up niggas left and right. It's not like, you know, he needs that. But if you want to do that to kind of like push the story forward and like, because we could kind of, we can clearly see Damian Priest is, he's a baby face. Like there's no other, like he, he's I'm definitely a baby that. face. Like anytime, like anytime you're, you're like, okay, walking back what you said, like, yo, the Seth Rollins, hey, you know, you don't need 
to 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 not have a title match. Like after I finish with Gunther, I'm gonna come over here to you. I mean, that's a nice point. You know, we we know you're not gonna have a belt, but you know, it's the thought mm-hmm. that counts and all that shit. But yeah, he's definitely the babyface. And internally, um, from what I saw from Fightful, they said that Rhea Ripley is listed as a babyface going forward. As well, okay. So yeah, clearly those two are the babyfaces coming out of this, and there's I, I don't know if if there's going to be an official um, pairing of like Liv and Finn or whatever, but it does seem as if there's, they are, it does seem as if they're working together. Cujo says here, Finn and Liv do have some kind of history together as they were the first to really take on the OG judgment day. Could see them continue to be allies after the implosion. Yeah. Could possibly. Um, That'd be interesting to have a, I don't know. Stable come out of that with Liv and or, Finn and B or I don't know. Or but maybe, uh, maybe they keep the Judgment Day name because, like, look, we really got Edge out of here. We already proved we can kick a nigga out and still keep the name. So maybe they shift out. But who's that? Mia we and huh? Who's that? We because if it's Liv and JD and Finn, the only person that did anything to Edge Carlito. was yeah, Carlito. <laughs> Yeah, but the only person that did something to Edge was Finn, Dom, Rhea, and Damien. So if they're all out of the equation and it's just Finn, Liv, and JD, you can't really lay claim to we the real Judgment Day because we... Like, nah, because you keep the core members, you keep Dominic Mysterio, he stays there, and then you got Carly, uh, okay. the core member. You can still, you, I'm saying like, you can push them out and still get back to the same amount like of people and same dynamic that you had. You have like a tag team, a leader, and you have a female in the group, and you still go forward with that. Like, I could see them pushing those two out of the group and still like continuing forward mm-hmm. with like, okay, we're still Judgment Day under a different name because they already proved like, we can kind of like shift this and make it something else that we want it to be. Like the name is just like, yo, it's just what we slap on the front. I kind of feel like, I kind of feel like Dominic either. I don't know. I don't feel like Dominic really fits in with either side after this whole thing, because if, okay. So Liv's been manipulating him, but Finn sees that. So he's not helping the situation, really. And honestly, Rhea belittles him. So I don't I don't really know if Dom is ready to strike out on his own after this whole thing is over. But it's hard for me to envision him really fitting in with either side if they do split. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I uh, think he needs about he needs probably maybe like another year like in a group to kind of like to to like make his star and like to come full circle because like uh two years ago when he broke off from Rey Mysterio and started doing his own thing and they moved him over to Raw, that was when we kind of saw like, okay, well, you know, he can do it. Now we know he has the ability, but we know like there's more in the tank that he can provide to us. Yeah. So I think like that year in another group, maybe uh, a run with Liv Morgan, like they're like doing like the um the whole Bonnie and Clyde thing. Maybe that's what shifts him forward. Mm-hmm. I, I think, but I think he does need someone at his side for a little bit long because he like yo, we can see the confidence and everything like that, but there's more to be added. I feel you. Um, I'll go to some of the comments here in the chat. Tony says, Liv Morgan is the new rated R superstar. Uh, Scott Jones says, too soon for her to come back as far as Rhea, but I don't question the storylines just predicting. Hey, that's my brother. So was Scott. Um, let's see. Mr. <laughs> Bowden says, oh, <laughs> Mr. Biggs came back. <laughs> 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 that is hilarious uh let's see oh and then adds another comment here what are the odds that priest retains at SummerSlam? what do you think about the idea that damian priest could possibly retain at SummerSlam against gunther 
Yeah, for me, you got to put the title on Gunther. It's like it's one of those shit to get off the pop moments for Gunther. I know he just had that long run with the IC title, but I think having him win King of the Ring and have that run and everything like that and then just like not put the title on him, I feel like that would set him back because mm-hmm. he's proven like, okay, look what I did with that belt. I'm ready to go on that run for the world title. Plus, I think Damian Priest losing that title mm-hmm. – at SummerSlam does more for him going forward, provides more storylines and everything like that for him going forward than him retaining it. Cause I know there are opponents for him to face for it, but I feel like you're, you're just like, not, I, I feel like you, you're wasting time not going ahead and getting to the, the Finn Balor and Damian Priest feud, because mm-hmm. like we've seen this kind of, we've seen this bubbling up for like the past, like, like I said, for a year, like there are lows in between where they're like, "Oh yeah, you my dog," like we like we cool and everything like that. But their their strife goes back a year, so I'm like, this is the moment where really we does. gotta have like, where we gotta have you know, you gotta go, you gotta do something with it. <sighs> yeah, I I don't know, man. I'm I'm definitely interested to see what happens with this. Um, I I think that Damian Priest losing to Gunther is probably going to be a little bit more interesting to me because this I don't know this is one of those things where I feel like okay you could have Priest win here and then have a rematch at the the Bash of Berlin and crown Gunther there but Gunther's not from Berlin. And nah, SummerSlam that's... is one of the big four. So just do it at a big show. Have him defend in Berlin. You know what I'm saying? And just move on. And then you can move into the Damian Priest Finn Balor program <clears throat> or whatever. And he'll be, you know, officially looked at as um, a face. Because I feel like they they have to have a situation. And I don't know. Like, I felt like before Rhea came back, they had to have a situation where they like kick him out of the group, but I don't know if they can do that. If Rhea is by his side, you feel me? Cause yeah, it's she definitely, cause he was all, ass. Yo, facts. Cause he was definitely holding on to the news the entire night. He was like, yo, ah, like I got some, I got, I know something that you don't know. And they were like, mm-hmm. yo, what, what, what is it? And he was like, ah, you know, I'll, I'll save it for later. So we definitely know <laughs> she's she might not be cool with the rest of them. And like he's the only one that stayed loyal to her. He's the only one that was like, hey, you gotta get her out of here. Hey, what are you doing? Like he was the only one that was avidly questioning and avidly like coming at like Dominic Mysterium, like, hey, this is not right. You you can't you can't do this to her. Like she she's gonna be pissed about it. Like he, he's the one that caught him in a lie where he was like, Yo, I talked to her, she was cool with it. And he was like, No, she definitely was not. So seeing as he's been in the one with constant contact with her, he's been the one that's been keeping her name like alive while she's been gone. She's he's definitely they're definitely not gonna get the support to put him out as long as she's around. So I feel like you gotta put both of them out at this point, especially since both of them, I look at them both as baby faces at this moment. Yeah, I agree with that. Good evening, humble. What's happening with you? What's happening? Go ahead. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, the Bash of Berlin, the Bash of Berlin. I think that's where you need to just go ahead and feed into what people are saying. Just give it the Ilya versus Gunther match. I feel like that's what needs to take place there. Like what you said, he's not even from there. Why? Why are you gonna put the belt on him in, in Germany as his first like title win? Like you already got, and, and, and tell you the truth, y- y'all been making too many links with him in Germany, and from like the from the get go of him coming up to the main roster. So that's kind of comfortable if y'all like, hey yo, you got the belt in Germany. I'm like, hey, what y'all trying to, what y'all trying to say to niggas? Like, I, like y'all, I remember the, I remember the last thing y'all was putting on. This shit not looking, it's not looking right. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, man. Like I think. <clears throat> I think you have way, I think you have too, way too many like options with Gunther going forward and with Damian Priest going forward if the belt changes hands. Just to you know, just to end it right there, for me. You on mute? Thank you, thank you for that. 
And I'm glad that when you reset, you came back all the way, these because for a minute you was like responding like you was like the newscaster. You feel me? And we had you out yeah. there in the hurricane. You feel me? I was like, damn, what on, you think? And that nigga was sitting there like. All right. So my thoughts on this situation. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's been rough. <laughs> Yeah, man, but, but but nah, let's 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 get into it though. You feel me? Because that that that's an interesting scenario to lay out, and I do agree with you um, that they should just go ahead and uh, switch the title at SummerSlam and just go with Gunther and tell some more compelling stories because they got plenty of them. Um, and another one of those is I don't know, two of these guys are in in consideration for Hater of the Year. Because CM Punk and Drew McIntyre just will not allow each other to breathe. They will not allow each other to get one up on one another. Uh, Drew McIntyre won the money in the bank, tried to cash it in. CM Punk thwarted that. Um, and and now uh, we're in a situation where Drew gets suspended indefinitely. CM Punk is asking for him to come back, but we don't necessarily know if CM Punk is clear to wrestle as of yet. So we're not sure if this match is going to take place at SummerSlam. Um, hopefully it does, because I don't know how much longer you can hold this off and continue to have them just getting in each other's way without them getting in the ring. It's been since January and I'd yeah. like to say that the seeds were even planted in November at Survivor Series for the possibility of this feud um, and for them to be able to spread that throughout mm. this year. And it's we're almost in August. We're in second week of July and yeah. they still have the bell hasn't rung and it's compelling. But how much longer can they do this? Um I, I assume and I would hope that this match happens at SummerSlam. Where where are you at with this and what they're doing with Drew and CM Punk? Yeah, if this match doesn't happen at SummerSlam, it's like, yo, why are you even building towards it? They, they, they have to have some inkling of when he's going to be cleared and if it's going to be around that time or else why would you push so heavily for Drew to be in the Money in the Bank match, have CM Punk cost him everything and everything like that? Like, I think they have like at least some type of knowing like, okay, he could be cleared like any time around here. So we can kind of like push forward full steam ahead to that. But as for this rivalry, I'm still of the mind that this needs to main event SummerSlam. Like I don't feel wait, you know what? I take that back. I think I, I take that back. I want that. that. That's back. the main event. That's the main <laughs> event in my heart. That's the main event in my heart. But I saw, I started to think about it. I was like, I was like, yeah, I was like, I had I talked myself out of it mid thought because I was like, yeah, Solo and Cody, that's not a strong enough main event. And I'm like, okay, but Roman Reigns coming through at the end, so that's the real, you know, that's the real. Like, okay, we are closing out the show. But yeah, I feel like this is this is the 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 um, rivalry to watch going in to SummerSlam. I say that I like the main event. Okay, Cody mm -hmm. and Solo because of like I said for what's going to happen after, but this is the the match to watch. This is the match that's been built up like you said, literally from the seeds were planted in November. It's one of those things like, yo, you can't continue to just to do the promos on TV and everything like that because after some point the rubber's got to meet the road. Like you got to do something. You got to give us something in the form of a match. Like I like the promos and everything like that. Mm -hmm. The appearance that WrestleMania, you know, him beating them up and dragging them out. All, all that's cool, but at some point, we need the match. Like, at yeah. some point, we, we can't just keep, like, you can't just keep stringing everybody along. You gotta do something. So, I've enjoyed this, and it speaks volumes that they've been able to carry the storyline so far without, like, getting in the ring. But I don't think you want to push it to a level of being like, okay, well, you know, they, they could just keep doing promos and everything like that. Because at some point, the bubble's going to burst and people are going to be like, so what the fuck are we doing? And right, it's, it's going it, to, it, exactly, it's going to be a negative outpour. It's going to be like, okay, well, you know, CM Punk coming out to cut promos. You, like, the crowd's going to cheer. That shit's cool. But you have people who are watching are just going to be like, I've seen this before. Like, like this is a rerun. Come on, come on with it. But I really, th there were a few things that I, that just like bothered me, like the money in the bank briefcase being wasted at money in the bank to push this storyline forward. I just wanted to say, because we didn't do a um, an after show or whatever, I feel like you could have gotten the same reaction that you got when 
when CM Punk came in, stopped him from cashing in, he could have done that with him just turning over the ladder. You didn't have to get it that far ahead and waste a, a Money in the Bank briefcase. Like, I thought that Drew McIntyre was like a, a red herring. I thought he was like, ah, there's no fucking way they're going to put the belt. I mean, yeah. I put, give him the briefcase. I'm like, there's no way. I'm like, CM Punk's going to show up and he's going to ruin it. And I just didn't like they just waited and just wasted the, the briefcase. I don't know that they wasted the briefcase, though. I mean, I understand that, you know, people enjoy the excitement of the, you know, the will they, won't they nature of the supposed, you know, cash ins or the cash in attempts rather. But they've been doing this for like 15 years. Money in the bank briefcases, you know, um, and, and you know what? We've never gotten a situation where uh the woman holding the briefcase is teasing cashing in multiple times over the course of her holding that briefcase for like because what i think they've only held the briefcase for like two weeks maybe tops the women so tiffany stratton can be that person to 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 do those teases over the next year until she decides to cash in or whatever and i don't know maybe for triple h he's like i this is my first year having a, a you know what I'm saying, like with full creative. Maybe I don't want to deal with the idea of the money in the bank concept. Maybe we want to do something else right now. Maybe we don't want to continue the trope. We've already got war games that we're gearing up for again. You feel me? Like maybe this is one of those situations where he doesn't want to just continue to do things because they're a part of the formula. And I okay. respect that. I respect that. Now, when it comes to I, CM Punk, you've been talking for a minute, bro. Let me just get this last uh, point. No, 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 uh and the the possibility of his return at SummerSlam and and that being the reason for us getting uh Cody and Solo as the main event of SummerSlam um CM Punk got to have a couple of matches before we give him the the match bro before we give him the close out before we give him the top billing because this man be hurt bro He's 45 years old. It's different from my bro. You feel me? So I want to see CM Punk succeed, and I don't want him to be in a situation where he's in the main event of the show, and then boom, he tried to do too much, and he gets hurt again, and then he got to sit on the sidelines because at that point, it's like you really got to think about maybe hanging it up along with John Cena, but you can't really do that because you can't get your shine when John Cena finna get his shine. But that's the only reason I say, like, I don't think that they should be the main event of SummerSlam is just because CM Punk has been injury prone for some time. And I don't want them to be put in a position to have to carry the main event and it falls short because the same thing happened last year with Jey Uso and Roman Reigns. Yeah. Yeah, man. You said you said a lot of shit that I agree with, especially the part where you were talking about, like, Damian Priest. I'm like... Uh, about the about not Damian Priest about the um money in the bank because Damian Priest teased that shit for about a year and niggas was calling him a dumbass and, and talking to <laughs> this nigga all out of character. They were like, Yo, when the fuck this nigga gonna cash in? Stupid ass nigga, niggas getting beat up with the title, he's not doing nothing. So I could kind of see how Triple H would be like, Okay, like let's do something completely different and just get it out of the way a year mm-hmm. long. Like and and not come back to it until like next year, and then we'll have something to do with it. But then I feel like of the mind where I'm like, I feel like you know the the money in the bank, the spirit of the money in the bank is to springboard someone's career, yeah, and to get them to that next level. I just felt like you could have gotten to the destination that they that they got to without sacrificing that briefcase and doing that. I feel like you could have springboarded like a Chad Gable, uh, you know, any of those guys in the match. Cause like, I was really excited leading up to it. Cause I was like, Oh, you haven't had a world title. You haven't had a world mm-hmm. title. You haven't sniffed the main event. I was like, Ooh. And then they added in Drew McIntyre. And I was like, fuck. What are you saying? <laughs> you stand up? I was, I was just agreeing with you on that note because I, I picked Andrade 
because I thought if they're going to do this thing with the briefcase, then this is an opportunity to tell a story with Andrade to elevate him over the course of this next year. And maybe by the time April, May, June, whatever, Andrade could be considered a little bit more serious or a little bit more of a main event player, you know? Um, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not against the, the decision that they made. Uh, yeah, shout out, shout out to Jared. Like, yo, nah, they, they, I don't think we need a money in the bank uh, show, but obviously that's making money. It's one of their staples. It's a big enough stipulation match for them to get away with it and be like, okay, we're doing a full show. Now, mm-hmm. if you would have t- asked me, like, do they need two nights with it? No, they like, yo, that's that's the question everybody been asking. They were like, does this pay per view need two nights? Does Re- does Royal Rumble need two nights? Does Survivor Series need two nights? I'm like, nah, just like. Just you know what I just thought about? Sure. John Cena popped up at Money in the Bank last year and said, London, the UK, you deserve a WrestleMania. And he's not going to be there if and when they ever have that. I, I, I'm not going to be here. <laughs> if I send you this picture of Kawhi, you feel me? Just know. <laughs> Said, man, look, man. Clipper said it's in the best interest that I, you know, I don't go out for Team USA. Y'all, y'all, y'all niggas understand. I'll come out and I'll come out and announce the attendance. That's about it. Man, that is Shit. absolutely crazy, man. That is absolutely nuts. I don't know, man. It's 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 cool, man. I, I'm I, I uh, money in the bank, man. I don't know if they need it, uh, but yeah, like you said, it makes money, so. The bottom line is always the most important thing, for real, for real. So it is what it is, bro. Um, We can close out with uh, NXT. Ethan Page is your new NXT champion. Uh, You have this continued partnership with uh, uh, TNA and more Joe Hendry, right? More Joe Hendry. Mm -hmm. He was Trick Williams' partner on uh, NXT this week. What do we think yeah. about this, man? Joe Hendry. Oh. Somebody said, uh, and where is it? I'm going to find it. and Because I, I want to read this verbatim. Uh, let's see. A lot of people don't like this guy on Instagram, but I don't give a fuck. This nigga's funny as hell. Uh, Burying Smarks uh, reposted this tweet. Somebody had quote tweeted, uh, NXT having more plans to use Joe Hendry heavily as a part of this NXT and TNA crossover. That was a report by Fightful Select. Uh, Somebody quote tweeted that and said, I miss when wrestlers wanted to be good and not just memes. And I don't know, just wanted to get your opinion on that because some people say maybe, you know, this is one of those situations where Joe Hendry is a, a better meme or a better character than a wrestler. And I don't know. What do you think about the the balance of that day? Um, for that, I think it leans better into like, okay, we're doing the meme. If we remember anything about OG NXT back when Triple H was doing it, back when they were like had their original run with it, that's what a lot of niggas were. <laughs> a lot of niggas was memes. A lot of niggas was gifts. A lot of niggas was like, okay, well, uh, you know, I saw this cool thing online. I'm gonna do it over here. That's what. That's the spirit of NXT. The the grandiose entrances, the the music and everything like that. And they get in the ring like you remember, like uh, Bobby Roode, you know, No Way Jose, those type of guys. I feel like he fits the spirit of all, like mm-hmm. the black and gold NXT of old. So, like, seeing him there, for me, it didn't feel out of place. I know a lot of people are like, oh, you know, it's just the song and everything like that. That's what niggas pay attention to. Like, the, the little shit that people like, oh, yeah, but this nigga can't do a 450 splash. Like, look, it's about catching <laughs> eyes and bringing people into the building. Like, if, if it's a theme song that brings people into the building, so be it. It's a work rate yeah. that brings people into the building, so be it. Well, if it makes money, it makes sense to me. Like, I don't like I don't give a fuck if he's like a meme or whatever. It's just like, yo, he's the, is he the most popular guy over there? He fit does he fit in step? Does he fit in step with what WWE often does? The Fandango shit. You remember that? They love that? that type of stuff. So it's like, yo, I think he fits in well 
with what WWE tries to do with like making these larger than life characters and giving them these personas and these things that kind of make them special and, sa- and stand out so the crowd can like latch on to this. This is why when I, I said it, like when they first started it, when they did like the battle royal and they threw him out, I was like, he's going to be back because he definitely fits yeah. the mold of what WWE <laughs> likes and what they like to do. But what was the rating though? Nigga, niggas don't give a fuck about the rating, bro. How did the match make you feel? <laughs> People apparently care about the ratings, though. Um, yeah, Joe Hendry, uh, salute. I, I think it just kind of speaks to the nature of uh, – the the social media age and and how people consume content uh because we're not only seeing situations like that like this has been happening in wrestling forever by the way like like let's not act like this is something new but like even like with like you look at like music you're seeing a lot more people that do skit come on bro desi banks just dropped a skit with a slap is Desi Banks finna just be in the studio, you know, like every week making an album? No, you feel me? No. So do I think that Joe Hendry is going to be some world-renowned five-star Dave Meltzer scale Okada type level wrestler? No. Do I think he needs to be? No. <laughs> you feel me? So, like, this is just one of those things where, like, like you said, Ben, he fits in step with what they do so they can utilize him and try to build him. And hopefully, hopefully, some of these top performers from NXT and WWE make their way over to TNA programming because I feel like we can make your niggas dope and make them look larger than life over here. But if we're not really giving you nothing but the no quarter catch crew in return, it's going to kind of feel like the same thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's it's like, how can you compare that to what AEW did when Kenny Omega was on their show multiple times? And you know what I'm saying? Like it's, are you trying? (laughs) It doesn't all the way feel like it, but you know, go ahead. I feel like the one that they're going to really do to like push it like, okay, we're going to feature you on both shows back to back is that uh, the Rascals reunion. Mm. Yeah, that's what I feel uh, is the one to bridge the gap. And I agree with that. The Rascals should be the one to bridge the gap. And I say this. Oh, man. This is fire. This is something that is a long time coming. Uh, Zachary Wentz back in an NXT ring. Trey Miguel uh, popping up on WWTV for the first time. I wish Myron Reed was a part of this, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves because no, just, I was about to say that. <laughs> yeah, but this is this is fire. You feel me? And I think that they're gonna do dope matches. I think they're going to have great promos. I think that the Rascals just have a great presence if you're trying to bring in a young, cool, and hip audience. They're they're just cool people that just happen to wrestle. You feel me? And it, it was dope to see. You see, like, the chat is booming about it. You feel me already? You feel me? Just because they all saucy in the ring. You feel me? And they all just seem like genuine dudes. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Why wouldn't they be the one to bridge the gap? I'm with you on that. I agree. They should be. Oh, yeah. That'd be dope. Oh, that would yeah. be dope. That'd be dope. Um, yeah, man. That's all I got. Because I don't really care about anything else on NXT. Damon Kemp got fired, by the way. Oh yeah. There you go. The good, the good Gable brother. <laughs> yeah, man. The the good Stevenson brother. The good Stevenson brother. That's the last name, Gable Stevenson. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Hey, oh, also, nigga, uh, hey, 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 nigga, give your brother oh. the spot on the bills. <laughs> I believe, I believe you do more. That is hilarious. Uh, yeah, DIY is your new SmackDown. Excuse me, your WWE Tag Team Champion Cedric Alexander and Ashanti the Adonis were moved over to NXT. Tyler Bate uh, tore his left pec, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it as far as uh, news goes. So. We can uh, go the fuck home. Well, I mean, we're already home, but you know what I mean? What you want to do before we go? I don't, get, I, don't got no, I don't got nothing else to add to the show. Uh, 
that's it for me. What you got? You got nothing? You already said you got nothing. We talking in circles. Uh, social? Yeah. Social? Socials, socials, socials. Hey, man, follow the gang at the enemy's P3 on all social media platforms. Make sure you stay tapped in, student dead, stay dangerous. Uh, Public enemies on Patreon. Like I said, there's a new episode of the extras with myself, Ben, and CJ. Uh, He'll be back next week. Um, I don't know, man. Just follow the gang at the enemy's P3, all platforms. And then uh, I'm at Oh My God Graham. So beat me there, don't meet me there. Oh, by the way, I won the predictions. You feel me? You see how I don't be throwing the shit in niggas' faces when I be winning? But I won the predictions. Ben uh, won, uh, what was it? Saturday was Money in the Bank. Boom. I beat him, Heat Wave, NXT, because I only got one match wrong. You feel me? Because I'm like that. I don't how I don't watch the show. You feel me? And I still did the thing. You feel me? That's crazy. You feel me? But hey, man. Oh my God, Graham, I be there. You feel me like that? Yeah. Yo. Before <laughs> I, before I, I do my uh, yeah oh, man, underscore that's underscore me and uh, Ben. It's on you, bro. Yeah, bro. I was about to. I was about to lay that. Out. I was about to be like, yo, man. Y'all gotta fire this nigga. He at the house. <laughs> he at the house. But yeah, man, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok at underscore sunrise underscore. And yeah, get get better, CJ. I'm gonna let you have it. Do let you have like your rest this week. Don't keep don't keep calling out. Not like yeah, yo. I'm glad he did it. I'm glad he called because if he was a no call, no show, definitely nigga would have got written up. Definitely yeah, got man. written up. He would have definitely got a write up, man. You know what I'm saying? It's all good, man. But hey, man. We'll be back next week. Make sure y'all take care of yourselves and each other. Deuces. Well, at you. It was a week, nigga. I had the bell for a week. <laughs> I had no cane rain. Seven days, like, nigga. nigga trying to say. <laughs> like, That's funny. Man, this nigga had the bell for two days. Some of you going to go home tonight and feel like you've been robbed. Some of you may get robbed. Some of you don't belong in a category. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that was it. No, when I get nervous, I tell the truth. <laughs>